So now that the expropriation bill has been adopted by the National Assembly, it will be sent to the National Council of Provinces for concurrence. Importantly, it would allow no compensation to be paid to landowners under certain circumstances. Well, let's understand what this is all about. And land expert Professor Ruth Hall from the University of the Western Cape joins us. Uh, Prof, good evening to you and welcome. For those who are unfamiliar with the legal processes around this, where does the bill sit now in the context of existing legislation on expropriation? Thanks so much, uh, Iman. This law uh, is to replace an apartheid era law, the 1975 Act. So we've always had an expropriation law. Uh, once this winds it w its way through the NCOP and eventually gets signed into law, it will then replace that law. Um, I think that, you know, uh, people often uh, uh, get a little confused between uh, the constitutional amendment issue and this bill. So firstly, there's a big uh, difference between the two. This bill was passed in, uh, in Parliament. It only required a 50% plus one uh, majority to get through Parliament. So it was expected that it would be passed. Uh, it goes to the National Council of Provinces where um, it's very likely that it will go through. I think that the main thing to say about this at present is that we're coming up to five years since the ANC elective conference where Ramaphosa was given the mandate to take forward the idea and the argument for expropriation without compensation and coming around to conference again this year. Uh, it's top priority politically, uh, I think, for him and his supporters to be able to say that at least some progress was made uh, in terms of getting this bill through, even though it's absolutely not the one uh, that many ANC supporters and certainly EFF supporters wanted. Because of this um, proposal of expro, well, anyway, we'll get to the, the, just the complexities and some of the pushback from the opposition benches. But in its form mm. now, it proposes expropriation as one acquisition mechanism to enable land reform and redress. And then compensation would be determined by agreement between the state and owners. And if they can't agree, then it will be uh, up to the courts to decide. Do you see this playing out in a, in a really complex and messy way? Or do we have enough here for, for clarity? We don't have enough here for clarity, Iman. I'll tell you what the wording does, and I would encourage any viewers who are interested to go to Parliament's website. You can download the expropriation bill. It's bill called B23 of 2020, and you can look it up, and it clearly spells out the process. Uh, it says that either um, compensation must be agreed by the parties or determined by a court. Um, so, you know, if we were in a situation where the state was constantly trying to expropriate property from private owners to redistribute widely, then we might expect an immediate bottleneck in the courts. But this is not the case. Uh, the ANC ruling party has not tried to expropriate land at scale, whether for land reform or other purposes. Uh, the state expropriates often for public purposes, uh, like for public infrastructure. So right now, it's unclear how it's going to be used. And I think politically, uh, the ANC has chosen not to say when it wants to push for no compensation and when it doesn't. And I think one of the reasons why nobody really is terribly thrilled about this bill mm. on either left or the right is that it doesn't really resolve this question. Uh, it sets out five circumstances uh, in which uh, there could be no compensation, but these are not exhaustive. Uh, so it says that it could be these cases, but it could be others. Uh, so, and they're very limited cases. They're not the kind of cases that we're seeing on the screen right now where uh, farmland is being used, right? Um, so the, the five particular situations where the bill says no compensation could be paid is firstly one where there's essentially speculation. There's no use. It's uh, land is being held uh, unproductively only to uh, realize appreciation. The second is where a state entities hold it incorrectly. So that's sort of irrelevant. Thirdly, where it's been unregistered. In other words, it's unclarity about who in fact is the owner. Fourthly, where there's been so much past government subsidy, for instance, during the apartheid era, that government has effectively already paid for that land. And the fifth is where there's a major health uh, hazard. I think that the fifth is an important one to think about in relation to inner city buildings, for instance, in parts of Johannesburg. I think that the state absolutely is looking at expropriating property, not necessarily farmland. So I think that that's an issue. 
Um, but, you know, we, are, we haven't seen the state trying to use these uh, powers up to now. It could have and waited for owners to take it to court. Um, so I think that the reality is that yet again, we're, we're arguing about the land issue. In fact, uh, there's, a, there's party politics operating here. Uh, yeah. And I do expect over time there will be a lot of court cases. I mean, as you say, it's, it's, it's certainly a piece of uh, legislation or legislative development that we, it would be in all of our interest to become a little bit more familiar with. But I want to go to this mm. part that is a little bit contentious, which opposition ben benches are contending, is an amendment of the Constitution through the back door. And what they're referring to is a previously proposed amendment to Section 25, which failed in Parliament, to allow expropriation yes. without compensation. It's the same clause retained in this expropriation bill. I understand. What's your take on that? Well, I disagree. Um, I disagree. That's the DA position. Um, in fact, the bill, and I hope people will look at it, it starts by, in fact, quoting at length from Section 25, the property clause of the Constitution. So I think that there's a deliberate misreading, particularly by supporters of the Democratic Alliance, to say that in the 1990s, there was an agreement that there would always be compensation paid for land. And that is not the case. Um, the, co the Constitution never said that there must always be compensation, um, and it never said it should be at market price. So the reality is that um, is that uh, the, the 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 law that we have now that will take its time and may be signed into law this year. I certainly think that uh, the president will try and push it to be signed into law this year, but at least uh, through next year, one would expect so. Um, this law would empower the state through actually not Minister of Agriculture and Land Affairs, M Minister Didiza, but rather through uh, Patricia DeLille, mm. who can delegate some powers, to be able to acquire property. But, you know, again, if any property owner um, disputes this, they can go to court. And that was a key issue. But I, I want to ground truth some of the politics here, because again, we're talking about a situation as if the state were trying to seize land from private owners. Mm -hmm. I think that an important element of the bill that hasn't been much commented on is that it doesn't only relate to owners of private private property. And if we look at what at the kind of land politics and conflict in the country, we see that a lot of it actually relates to situation where situations where rural people, say in communal areas, in Colobeni in the Eastern Cape, in parts of the platinum a mining area of the Northwest, are being expropriated. These are black communities who do get expropriated by the state without compensation, but they don't have private ownership rights. They have customary rights and informal rights. So in fact, we see the state expropriating rights all the time. And I think that actually what's important now is not wh what is written in this law. The question is politically how the state wants to use it. Uh, I think yeah. that one thing that would help is if Minister Lamola, a Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, can move ahead with trying to give capacity to the land court so that when cases do come through, uh, they can be well dealt with. But to now, for now, politically, I think that everybody really knows that the NC hasn't really been trying to use these powers up to now. Yeah. Um, and that what's crucial here is a political moment. Uh, Professor Hall, I, I really wish we had more time to talk about it because I think one of the important things is to, you know, excavate whether this is the bill, um, you know, to really energize and catalyze proper land restitution and, you know, and kind of speed up and, and energize that, that process. And, you know, at this stage, there's a lot of um, conflicting ideas around whether it, it, in fact, is the tool and the instrument to do that. Hopefully a, a bigger discussion in future, perhaps even a panel discussion, but thank you for your insights. It's, it's really been helpful. Appreciate your time this evening. Professor Professor Ruth Hall is from the Institute for Poverty, Land and Agrarian Studies at the University of the Western Cape.